Valens Research, Uniform Financial Analytics. When we come to Interpublic, just like when we come to any company um, in the Valens Research app, we start right here, which is the PVP chart or the Performance and Valuation Prime chart. Just like I said, we're very, very literal here at Valens when it comes to the uniform accounting, meaning we want things to be uniform. We're very literal overall, right? Our goal here in this chart is to help you understand what is the performance of the company, its operating performance in terms of return on assets and asset growth. Also to understand the valuation of the company in terms of valuations relative to its asset base, what we call a valued asset prime ratio, a adjusted price to book, a uniform price to book, I should say, and PE, our adjusted, our uniform accounting PE, which we call the value to earnings ratio, right? A uniform PE. So when we look at this, Right, the first thing that jumps out to us on these historic charts is the blue bars versus the orange bars. The blue bars here are the uniform accounting true blue return on assets for this business. The orange bars are the distorted as reported ROAs for this business. And we see immediately right here when we look at Interpublic is for the last 15 years, as reported metrics are massively understating how profitable this business is. On an as reported basis, the highest ROA this company has had is 5%, right? For an asset light advertising and media business, that doesn't make any sense. And it doesn't because in reality, the uniform accounting metric shows this company really is generating a 31% return. And by the way, it's return this last year in 2019 was one of the highest returns that it had been in the last 15 years not in the middle or lower, like the as reported metrics tell us. But that's not enough. It's not just that the ROAs are massively understated on an as reported basis. If you look on an asset growth perspective too, we also see massive distortions on an as reported basis. Very similar to the chart above, the orange bars are the as reported ROAs of a business, the as reported asset growth for the business. The blue bars are the true blue uniform accounting metrics. And what we can see here is what's really telling is for the last two years, if you were analyzing this business, you would think you had a company that was below cost of capital, right? A 4% ROA business, absolutely below the cost of capital. That was massively plowing money into the business. That doesn't make any sense at all. Who would want to own that business? The reality is for three of the last four years, you had a high return business that was investing. But last year, you, also, you actually saw them shrunk, shrink, which is actually why ROA probably rose because they were getting rid of low return assets. Now, by the way, I'm going to cover these other four, these other five bars here that we haven't talked about. I'm going to cover that afterwards. But first, I want to jump down to the valuation perspective. Because if you look, you can really think of the ROA and the asset growth bars here on a uniform accounting basis as showing us a better representation, a better understanding of free cash flow, right? Because the really important thing is when you think there's this misnomer that negative free cash flow is bad and positive free cash flow is good. That's not always true. If you have a company that has very high returns and is growing even faster than its returns, let it reinvest, that's a negative free cash flow business. That's Amazon, right? Amazon for multiple years, very good ROAs, but even faster growth than the company could possibly supply with its cash flows alone. You want that business at its high return to keep on investing. So the valuable thing is we can understand, is this a company that has good or bad free cash flow in terms of positive or negative? Because for instance, a company like Interpublic, who's got a return this high, we wouldn't want to see them consistently shrinking, right? Like they did from 2008 to 2010 and a few of these years. We want to see a company that's like that, not just throw free cash flow to the wind and distribute it. We want to see them invest if they can do so with returns that are stable. So we can understand free cash flow in a different way, looking at ROA and asset growth. But then our next question is, that's great. What is the market expecting them? And that's where the valuation perspective of things comes in. And what we're looking at here from a valuation perspective, the first chart that we're looking at is we're actually looking at the valued asset prime or adjusted price to book metric, right? So the orange bars again are the distorted as reported price to book for this company. The blue bar is the uniform accounting true blue multiple this company trades at relative to its asset base. There tends to be a very strong relationship between this metric here, valued asset prime, and this metric here, ROA. Just intuitively, the higher your return relative to your cost of capital, 
the higher multiple I should want to pay for your business. Because if I have a required rate of return of 5%, let's say, on a real after-tax basis as an investor, and you're generating a 20% return, well, I can pay up to four times the value of your assets and still actually know that I'm going to get my required rate of return, right? Because I need a 5% return, you're producing a 20% return, right, on $100 of assets. If I pay $400 for that same asset base, I'm going to get a 5% return. And so there's a very strong relationship between this metric and ROA. The next metric we look at is an adjusted price to book. And it's really important here when we look at Interpublic, because not only does Azure Porter Metrics tell you that Interpublic is a worse returning business than it actually is, Azure Porter Metrics also tell you this company is cheaper than it really is. In terms of the idea that when we actually look at it, we're seeing a company that you think is trading at a 10 times multiple, 11 times multiple, and it's actually trading at 17 times multiple. And the value of looking at a value to earnings prime ratio is the basically the idea of why we give you history is so you can get what we call a heat map, right? You can get context of how does company trade relative to what it's traded like historically. And for in a public, right, well, the market may be under, well, Alice Reporter Metrics may be under misunderstanding the company's returns. The important thing is it's also trading towards the higher end of the valuation, which is significant because that tells you that the market's probably looking at the Alice Reporter Metrics. The market's not looking, I mean, looking at the uniform accounting metrics, the market's not looking at the Azure reported metrics because it wouldn't be trading at a premium valuation relative to history if you didn't know that returns were significantly higher than normal. The last chart we're going to look at here is total shareholder return, TSR. TSR, or total shareholder return, for those of you who don't know, is the understanding of how, uh, what a company's return is annually in terms of both capital appreciation for an investor and also any dividend, any, any uh, uh, dividend income that a, company is going, that a company generates and distributes to investors. So the, the second part though is TSR and then there's the second R, the small R, that R is relative. Relative to what? Relative to the index that is relevant for that company. In this case, right, the S&P 500 because we're looking at a, a US company. When this chart is flat, like these two periods, that designates you've got a company that is basically performing in line with the market. When it's declining, like it was these periods, that means you have a company that underperformed the market. When it rises, like it did these periods, that's because of the fact that you've got a company that outperformed the market. And what you see is this trend here tends to strongly track what you see in terms of returns and asset growth, right? We saw a slope down here, because even though the company was expanding returns, it actually wasn't expanding earnings, right? Because it was shrinking. Then here we started to see things rise because returns actually expanded, right? Then it's flat here and then it rises as ROA rises, declines as ROA declines. And then what we're seeing here though is the market's paying much more attention to the uniform accounting than the Azure reported metrics. Um, by the way, I just want um, all of you to know, um, just because we've gotten some questions, if you have any questions, please feel free to enter them into the chat or into the Q&A box and we'll cover those questions at the end of the call. Thanks. Um, so the next question is though, that's all well and good, but it's all historically looking. How do I understand if a company is cheap or expensive? And that's when these forecast bars come in, right? The two light blue bars are what Wall Street analysts are forecasting this company to do in terms of return on assets the next two years. Similarly, the white bars are what the market is pricing the company to do at a $7 billion market cap or an $18 stock price going forward. So meaning, if you think that Interpublic is a long, you need to believe that Interpublic is going to see returns that are going to stay above 21% for the next five years and is going to grow a little bit. If you believe those two things, Interpublic is undervalued. If you don't or you're not sure, you should probably walk away from Interpublic. And that's the real goal of this chart of the performance evaluation prime, to be able to distill your decision-making process as, a, as an investor on the arcane accounting mathematics into a very simple understanding. What was comp the company's real profitability historically? And what is the market expecting it to do going forward? What we call embedded expectations. What investing grades like Bill Miller, um, uh, Klarman, and et cetera, regularly focus on. Right? And so because of the fact that you can't make a real decision about a company until you understand what the market thinks. Right? And so what we can do now is, right, once we understand the market expects returns to decline, to basically remain at where they are in 2020, in the middle of a recession, and right, the middle of a pandemic, well, that looks like the kind of situation where we actually might have an opportunity if we think that the company can do better. 
The other thing that we can do here is with the embed expectation analysis tool, we can do quick scenario analysis. So let's say that you think that the market realizes that Interpublic isn't going to keep on shrinking. It'll grow modestly. So if the company is going to grow modestly, right, around 1% a year, let's say, well, that means that the company's ROA, return on assets, only needs to be 20% to justify current stock price. Now, let's say that because of your research, you understand that through a normal cycle, and the next cycle is going to be normal because of the fact that they've got strong exposure to digital media spend, et cetera, you think returns are going to be like they have been in the middle of a normal cycle. So returns peak at 30, trough at 23. So we're going to give this company a uh, forecasted ROA over the next five years. It's going to average out around 26%. Now we can solve, right? We change this from input to output for stock price. We can solve the stock price and see what the company would be worth if it could do that. And what we see is if the company could do that, Interpublic would be significantly undervalued. Specifically, Interpublic would be worth 60% 60, 60 more than it is right now. It wouldn't be worth $18, it'd be worth $29. But the whole entire idea of this is we can distill that decision very rapidly. So what we, what we let you do is you don't have to spend your time building models, understand, spend your time fixing whether or not EPS on, an, on, a, um, on a gap or a non-gap basis is right. You can just actually have a conversation about the world of companies, right? Because what we're having a conversation about here is, okay, what has something changed about Interpublic to make them a different company than they have been historically? And what are their economic moats, et cetera? Valens Research. The world's leading source for uniform financial analytics.